Come on, baby, come back to life. I'm doing a little bit of CPR here. Come back to life, come back, come back. Uh, full throttle at 170 mile an hour. I could have lost my engine the same way because verified on camera. Call it on camera. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little interesting. I had a problem and it also relates to a good friend of mine, Stang Mode. If you guys keep up to date with both of us, you know that we're both friends. I know him personally. You know, my heart goes out to him. Maybe you know his situation, but in case you don't, let me just fill you in real quick. He was uh, at Pocono Raceway and he had a second engine failure. 2020 GT500 built motor by L&M. While that motor did have a problem early on, they had to rebuild a head gasket. That, that can happen you know, faulty parts or whatever, just things that, uh, you know, can happen when you're racing cars and stuff like that. When you're pushing these things to the limit, which we have done numerous times, times on my channel. But uh, in this situation, he went out to Pocono. He's racing street speed. He did a, I'm um, just going to go to go fast. We got some weather coming in and uh, I don't want to get rained on, but uh, we only have a little bit of sunlight left too. I'll link everything down in the description. You go check it out so you get the full story. I don't want to, you know, steal his thunder, steal his story. But uh, what I'm going to say now, what I'm going to say in today's video I think is going to be very relevant because I think that there's a lot of finger pointing going on uh you know is it his fault is it a tuner problem is it an engine builder problem and I'm going to say after what happened to me what just happened to me a couple of days ago I think that this is nobody's fault and now hear me out I think that this is uh it's a mechanical failure but it's something that um anyway we're going to dive into it I'm going to tell you why I think what I think again relates to me I've made a phone call to him we've talked about it i've talked to a good friend of mine ken who's taught me so much about you know engines and stuff like that i mean invaluable he's a master mechanic about what happened to me and does could that have happened to stang mode and uh, has taken down his second engine so anyway let me digress let's go back to the beginning very very quick he was making a first pull at uh Pocono raceway and again, street speed, they, there's a bit of jumping or whatever. They didn't have, they had a false start essentially. So they wanted to redo it, but they're racing up to speeds around 170 mile an hour, uh, full throttle. So you get, a, you get a running start and then you're in the throttle. You are full boost, you're full send, you know, up to X, whatever uh, mile per hour that you can get to. And whoever wins is the victor, you know, yada, yada, yada. So what happened was their first pull went correctly Okay, everything looked fine in the video, but the second one, things started to get hot, and he ended the pull at 170 mile an hour and 239 degrees IETs. Okay, that's what the engine is seeing after the intercooler, after the, the, the intercooler in the blower. So hot, these cars are running both his and mine full fuel systems on E85. So what that means is that the, your fuel doesn't detonate as early as it would like 93 pump gas, for example. Let me get out here in the sunlight. And uh, cause I gotta show you around the car a little bit as it pertains to me. What I think I would bet a lot of money that this is the same thing that happened to him. So here we have my 2019 Ford Mustang GT, you guys are pretty familiar with. It is Odin Supercharged. I do need to pop the hood and the trunk because I got to show you what's going on. Got to show you why I think what I think. And I think that uh, before this situation with him gets out of hand and uh, all the hate, because I mean, I see the comments too on his channel. He's a friend of mine. So yes, I am kind of backing him up in a way. The He did uh, some data logging, which is great. That's his saving grace right now. Is he did a little bit of data logging on the runs. Um, and so they've been dissecting it over the past a week or two. And uh, the second pool looked like it was completely fine. The car was acting normal, except that the IETs, IET2s, kept to, they kept continuing to rise and uh, to a dangerous point, to the point where the car was pulling all the timing that it could, the car was doing, the computer was doing everything it could to save the engine in that car until it was at the point of failure. And unfortunately we know that failure point was 239 degrees. It was actually a little bit probably before then. Uh, his latest video said that uh, he was down to compression in all cylinders, except for cylinder six had zero compression. So that means that that engine is toast. I'm sorry, Stang Mode, when you see this video, that means your engine is done skis. It's over. Uh, you are definitely going to be rebuilding that entire thing. In my opinion, uh, especially looking at the spark plug, you definitely had uh, uh, some severe detonation, especially if you're down one hole. And uh, you may have had piston to valve contact. I, I don't know. Time will tell. I would I would love to see him. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. Hey, brother, can I call you right back? 
Yeah, sure. All right, all right, thanks, man. All right. Sorry, a friend of mine with the uh, GT350. He's a good guy, Rob. Appreciate you calling. I'll get back to you in a second. But anyway, continuing along with what I'm talking about. So it looks like his engine is completely done. I've been through an engine failure myself. Now, let's get into my story right quick. Why I'm defending him, what happened to me. So we just had a very nice, pleasant trip at Mustang Week uh, 2021. And what I have not shown on camera is that we are on the 69 millimeter pulley. I'm going to pop this hood and show you what that looks like and uh, the relevance behind all this so Odin supercharger and it is scorching hot so these run a little bit hotter than a uh, like a Whipple for example it's a TVS versus twin screw argument but uh, we are in a 69 millimeter pulley down here grip tech and it is absolutely saucy I bet if I die into this right now it's making a thousand horsepower to be confirmed here in the next week or so but um, anyway so what's going on is that uh, we have a blower on top of an engine it creates heat so you have to have all this cooling all right we know how superchargers work and then we have we have our, our um, air to water intercooler and then for my car and also staying modes in the trunk we have an aftermarket cooling system okay so this is a pnr ice tank now this is the point this right here not not this bracket but what's underneath okay this is a uh EMP Stewart, Stewart EMP, uh, big pump. This is the big boy, they're stage four pump. These things can flow a ton of water coolant, whatever you have in your ice tank. But what happens when that pump fails? That's exactly what happened to me at Mustang Week is a few friends of mine, we were on the highway and we lined up, I did a little pull. I mean, I'll enter, I'll put in the clips, you know, throughout. And so, and then we'll slow them down so you can see exactly what's going on. But we did a pull. The car took off like a bat out of hell. It was absolutely insane, the speed from about 70 mile an hour to its full acceleration at watts. The amount of uh, acceleration we had out of the car with this pulley is, is intense. It was crazy. I can't wait to get this thing on the racetrack with this pulley. It's gonna probably break some hearts and it's gonna be a little intimidating, but I digress. So the second uh, pull that we did, we were not running ice, but real quick, ice tanks don't necessarily bring your ITs down. They may help a little bit, but it's really there for drag strip stuff, adding a lot of ice. This thing will hold like 30 pounds of ice in the, in the tank there. But what they do is it adds a lot of capacity, fluid capacity. So it helps your recovery when everything is working properly. Now, in my case, what actually happened the second pull was we started the run at about 130 degrees or so. I, I have to look in. That shit is crazy. What happened was though, is I, I did the watt pull. IETs continue to rise. Normally they will drop, like in this clip here, just kind of a little. See how it goes down? All right, and now it's coming back up because I'm off the throttle. Things are hot. Just a little bit of speck of acceleration. But you'll see that ITs actually decrease. Now, in my case, they actually rose. And they rose to uh, not unsafe levels because I was able to see that and get out of it before things became an issue. At 155 degrees, the car is definitely pulling timing, even though it's on the 85. It doesn't detonate as early as 93, but it still can. It's still fuel. So we weren't anywhere close to 100, or I'm sorry, we were not anywhere close to 239 degrees. But um, what I think happened was that we had a, a loss of prime. We had an air pocket. I don't know how it got there because I've been running with this ice tank in this system for you know months now at this point. I, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know if it got shook up on the trailer when we trailered it down and then I, who knows. It, maybe it's an electrical prop. Maybe it's just a pump that's going bad. And in Stang Mode's case, I think that uh, that is proven to be true. I would like to see him come out with a video. Maybe they can test it. They can look at the relays inside of the pump. Maybe they can uh, uh, determine you know, a failure point due to the pump because what happened to me was we were in the pool. ITs continued to rise. Had I stayed in that pool and not seen what I was looking at, um, then I think that we could have lost 
the engine, my engine, in the very same way. If I was out there trying to do 170 mile an hour on the highway, unsafe. But my point is that we could have seen IETs continue to rise because there was, zo there was no flow. We confirmed that when we went back to the condo and then I immediately went back to the car because uh, the, the IETs when we were driving home were not really recovering. They were, were continuing to stay kind of steady, dropped a little bit due to airflow, but nothing was flowing. And we confirmed that we came back, left the car on. This thing was making noise. I'll show you what that sounds like in a second, but there was zero flow here. I opened this up. I even stuck my hand down there. This is the return right here, and there was zero flow. What I had to do to make this come back alive, I had to unplug things. I had to go around the, the car, but ultimately what I discovered was I had to reburp the system. I had to squeeze, 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 and then I had to go up to the engine up here. And I had to start squeezing the lines. And like our return style fuel system, same with the water. So it comes in and does this big circle here. Ultimately, what ended up happening was that we lost our prime somehow. Luckily for me, I was able to catch it early. Had we stayed in the throttle, I think that we could have went pop this same way that Stangmo did. It's kind of where I'm at right now is, it, it, I think we're a bit too early to start pointing fingers. It's easy to look at an engine build. And I'm, I'm, this is not sponsored. I don't, I'm not building built by L&M at all. I, I, this is an RPG built motor. I don't owe L&M anything. I don't owe Palm Beach Dino anything. I was tuned by them for a long time and they're fine. I'm tuned by a, a local tuner that's great. Wingard Performance, the guy I highly recommend it by the way. Link's in the description. But um, I digress. So anyway, what I'm, I'm trying to say here is let's, let's hold off on the finger pointing right now. I would like to see Sting Mode come out with a video, test the relay, test uh, the wiring. See if you can find a point of failure with your intercooler pump because when they go down or if they're weak or if they lose their prime, this can happen. And this is exactly what his videos and his data logs look like. His it looked to me like it was not an engine build problem. It was not a tune problem. Probably something as simple as a $500 intercooler pump. And that's unfortunate. It's taken down a $30,000 engine but that is racing. I know that it's what the comments are gonna reflect is that it is what it is and it's unfortunate. But um, again, my, uh, my heart, my hat goes off to Stangmo. He is a good friend of mine. So I hope that he can get his, his car back on track here very soon. It's gonna be a very expensive uh, fix for sure. But uh, that's something I have to do is also reach out to Store DMP or you know, maybe Lethal Performance where I bought the pump, see if there's return policy because mine is actually doing weird things too. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. Uh, sometimes it's working intermediate. It always makes noise and I do wanna show you what it sounds like, what the flow looks like uh, so that you can check. Maybe you're having the same problem. Maybe you're seeing IETs rise when they shouldn't, or maybe you're seeing uh, little to zero recovery out of your uh, supercharged cooling setup, whatever you have. So I'm gonna show you that real quick in the video, but uh, that's just kind of my, my thoughts right now. But I just went through a, a similar scare, and I think that that's why this video is gonna hold weight. I know it's lengthy and I'm just rambling, but I think that, uh, again, it's a little too early to start finger pointing, all right? Uh, we bring you guys lots of content the best that we can. We push the limits of these cars and sometimes things break. Sometimes it is beyond our control. You know, had Stang Mode been looking down at all the, the, the stuff, um, then maybe he could have seen it starting to rise, got out of it. But there's a lot going on at 170 mile an hour. I can tell you that. And when things go bad, they go bad very quickly. So we can't, I can't personally fault him for that. It would have been over in a split second anyway. Once, once those IT shot up like that, it was over. So, I mean, cause he's only in the car making that pass for a few seconds really. So, I mean, these cars are wicked fast um, and it just doesn't take a lot of time. But anyway, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna turn the car on. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when everything is working properly and uh, how things sound with this setup. And uh, that way, maybe you're having, so I would actually, t tell me this, in the comments, if you've had a similar issue, drop, your your thoughts and discussion down below in the comments. I would love to hear it. I'm sure that Stang Mode would love to hear it too. And uh, I'm gonna encourage that he come watch this and check up in the comments and too, to, uh, that way we can kind of help each other out. That's the intent and purpose behind this video. So, all right. And things continue to get hot. We're on our way, we're gonna open up the back of that. I just wanna show you the flow and everything and uh, how I'm running mine. And maybe you can see something in the video about 
the way I've installed mine and why now is starting to actually act up. You know, I've uh, been driving with it for a couple of thousand miles and it's been hiccuping recently a little bit more often. But uh, for him, you know, this is it's unfortunate, you know, but when, when he was in the throttle and things started to heat up, you know, it just got to the point where the car started pulling all of the, uh, the timing that it could. Things continued to heat up and then the fuel started knocking which is what they saw in the log and that is uh unfortunately especially e85 that is detonation your engine is coming apart at that point so um i i would highly expect to see them uh pull that the engine apart and see some pretty ugly stuff you know maybe uh the piston rings are definitely going to be damaged or gone and uh cylinder six like they talked about the pistons probably either not going to be there or they're gonna have a bent rod or they're gonna have a hole in the piston or something bad i'm sure in, in the coming days we're gonna find out exactly uh what what they find but uh anyway so all right we're pulling in the park and you hear the pump see it it, it comes and goes so it's, it's something wrong all right, so my car is off, but I've got mine going to a switch. Down, it's actually off. All right now, it's running. And come back here and verify. So it doesn't sound as healthy as it should. It sounds like it's actually go going out. Oh, this thing's tight. Plastic is really tight. Anyway, all right, so look, verified right there. Exactly it, no flow. You hear the pump is on, got no flow. Now watch this trick. So glad that this is actually messing up on camera. I'm gonna start the car. Okay. Verify that this is up. Come back. We have no flow. No flow whatsoever. So I'm gonna start squeezing on stuff and see if I can get it to come back. Here we go. Let's plug it. I'm gonna unplug it. So it turns off. Plug it back in. See if it comes back. So I feel some flow, but it's not enough down a, a you know a freaking hot supercharger I'm gonna kill power and you can hear it turn off in the back and I've checked the wiring back here and everything in my in my situation it's good and now here's the pumps coming back All right so these are about 550 bucks or so these pumps and uh, come on baby come back to life I'm do a little bit of CPR here Come back to life, come back, come back. Here we go, here it comes. There it goes. Look at the flow. So you just gotta, you just gotta cycle things, unplug things, start burping the system, get a little CPR, a little love, and she'll come back. But um, you can see how, how much it flows here. So, that's the way that it's always supposed to look is you're supposed to have that amount of flow. It's supposed to be, you know, pretty significant when you're, uh, we got this big pump. So nothing is clogged. I just, I don't, I don't understand what the problem is, what, what the failure point is. What's up with the sun? So there we go. Verified, you know, I'm having the same problem. So that means that if I were, you know, uh, full throttle at 170 mile an hour, I could have lost my engine the same way because verified on camera, caught on camera, pump failure. It's intermediate, it's coming and going. And it's been good, solid for 2,000 miles. But here recently, we have a problem. So I don't think it's a wiring issue in my case, and I don't think it's a wiring issue in his case either. I think this is a, a Stewart EMP pump problem.
So um, we got to get it with the manufacturer, see if there's any kind of a warranty on it. Otherwise, it looks like we're spending $500 on my on my end. But in Stingmo's case, he's buying a $30,000 engine. So hopefully this video is uh, you know informative enough for you to be able to chase down a problem if you're having you know a similar situation. You're seeing IETs that are just kind of doing weird things, and uh, you know this will help you to uh, prevent you know some kind of an engine failure or something like that due to something as simple as an intercooler pump failure. So staying mode, highly encourage that you use this video. Show Chuck in the shop. I know it's going to be lengthy, but I think that especially now that we have caught on camera a pump failure, I think it's something to look at. And I think that uh, you need to uh, feel free again to use any of this footage to uh, for for your own benefit there and for your storytelling as well because I think that it matters. I think that it matters. It's uh, in my opinion not a engine build problem, not a tuning problem, and not necessarily a, a, a driver operator problem. I think it is uh, something as simple as a $500 pump and that sucks. But um, hopefully again this video helped you out and uh, I'll see all of you guys later. God bless you all. Bye.